What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to take a look at data binding and validation using the Shin HTTP framework. Server-side data validation is essential in order to follow three key rules to develop secure applications. Those three rules are never trust user input, never trust user input, and again, never trust user input. And if you want to learn data science with Python, check out DataCamp. There is a link in the description below this video. And you can also download the Golan cheat sheet there is a link in the description below this video as well. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Okay, let's get started by understanding what are the options the Sheen framework provides in order to bind the input. Here we have the post endpoint in our API that allow us to create new posts. Here we are passing the context, this struct, Sheen.context. And if we go there, here, we're gonna see that we are using this bind JSON function and there are some other functions that we can use to bind the input for example we have bind this one we can use it to bind the form the input form or we can also use it to bind the query strings we can bind the headers the headers that we receive on the request we can bind those by using this bind header function we can bind json that is the one that we are using bind query to bind the query string and we can bind the URI and we can use some other functions. We can bind XML, YAML. So those are the functions that we have. If we go within this function, this bind JSON function is a shortcut for must bind with. So if we go here, we're gonna see that if you get any errors, it's going to abort. And if you go here, we're gonna see that it's going to write the headers and it's going to return a 400 status code and is going to return plain text as the error. So if you want to have more flexibility to send the right headers with the content type that we want to send as the response, we should use should bind JSON. And we also have some other options. We have should bind for HTML forms and query strings. We can also use, we can also use should bind header should bind JSON, should bind query, should bind URI, should bind XML, and should bind YAML. Okay, now let's move on to the video struct here. And here we can use struct tags. These are the struct tags where we can specify the different formats. We can specify JSON. We can also specify XML and a name associated to the tag that we're going to use in that case. We can use form. to specify the name of the field that includes the title in this case. We can also use validate, for example. And here we can say, for example, that is, this is gonna be, I don't know, an email, just to give an example. And we can also say that the binding is going to make this field required, for example, required. So, these are some options. We're gonna see a few more now. So let's first, let's create a new struct to assign an author to this video. So we're gonna create a new struct. It's gonna be a person. And this person is gonna have a first name. There's gonna be a string. And I'm gonna copy this. And we're going to use first name as the attribute for the JSON format. And it's going to have a last name. Sorry, his first name, like this. Okay, and it's going to be last name. And let's add the age of the person just to be able to specify a range. So let's use int 8 for this. And we're going to use age here. And this person is going to have an email. There's going to be a string. And the JSON field is going to be email. And here we can assign the author now. That is going to be a person. And for JSON, it's going to be author. Like that. OK, now let's add some tags for binding and validation of these two structs. 
the title, we want it to be between two and 10 characters, for example. So we can specify that by doing this binding and we can say min two characters and max 10 characters, for example, like that. And we want a description with no more than 20 characters. So we can say max equals 20. And for example, for the URL, we can make it required and we can validate the URL format by specifying that we expect a URL like this. And for the author, we want this field to be required. Finding, and we say here required, like that. Okay, now let's add some tags to the person struct. So I want the first name and the last name to be required. And I want the age. Let's say that I want an age between one and 130. So we can say that we want the age to be greater than or equals to one and less than or equals to 130, like that. And for the email, here, let's use the validate tag and we can define that we expect a value here. So we set this as required and that we expect an email format. So if we don't get a valid email format on this field, it's going to throw an error. Okay, now let's go back to the controller and let's make some changes there. So here we need to handle errors actually. So we're going to assign an error here and as usual, we are going to check if error is not nil. And in that case, we're going to return an error. So we're going to make a few changes here. Instead of returning a video, we're going to return an error in case we have any errors. And in this case, if you don't get any errors, we'll return nil. And now let's go back to the server. Okay, and here I'm going to move this so I can handle the error in case we get any errors when saving the video. So here's going to be error. And I'm going to check if error is not nil. Here I'm going to return, I'm going to remove this actually, and I'm going to use the code HTTP that in this case is going to be bad request, status bad request, this one, this is actually 400, as we can see here, and here we're going to use sheen.h to return the body of the error. So we can say error. And we're gonna use the error function from the error, error that error, like that. And that is going to give us the description of the error. Okay, and yeah, I forgot to, here. Yeah, okay, let's go back. And if we don't get any errors, CTX, that's JSON. This is going to return a 200 code. HTTP status, okay. And just for testing, we are going to add a message here. And this message is gonna be video input is valid. Okay, now let's run this. Go run server.go and let's go to Postman. Now we have a problem here with the validation of this H field because we are sending zero as the value and this is expecting between one and 130. So and let's say that we pass 200. We're gonna get the same error. And if we pass 20, 
yeah, the input now is valid. Okay. And let's say that we send an invalid email format here. And this is not going to validate the format because we are using validate. But if we change this by binding, let's do that and let's run this again. Let's go back to Postman. And if we run this now, we're going to get the error that the email is not valid. The title should be between two and 10 characters. So let's say that we send an empty title. This is going to return an error. The key video that title, error validation for title fail. Basically the main tag because it's less than two characters. So if we add a title with more than 10 characters, this is going to fail. It's going to say field validation for title failed for the failed on the max tag because we exceeded this number of elements, or this number of characters. So if we put title that has five characters, we're going to be just fine. It's going to still fail on the email, so we need to change that. And now we should be good to go. Yes, the input is valid. So let's say that we put an invalid URL here. This is going to throw an error. Yeah, key video that URL, field validation for URL failed on the URL tag because here we specified uh, here. Here we specified the URL that we expect a URL and it's not a valid URL. That's why we get this error. Okay, um, the same for the required. For example, the first name is required here. I'm going to fix the URL first. Okay, if we send uh, an empty first name, for example, this is going to throw an error. Yeah, key video that author that first name. Error field validation for first name failed on the required tag. This is because we are not sending a value there. Okay. And now if we put the first name, yeah, the video input is now valid. Okay, now let's add a custom validation. Let's say that we want to add a custom validator that is going to check that the video is cool or not. So to add that custom validator, first we need to specify it here, validate, and we can call this is cool. And if we go to the controller, so here we can do that on this new function, validate equals to validator that new. And this is going to import, no, we don't need this function, just that. Okay, and this is going to import this package. This is the package that Shin uses for validations. And I forgot, to, yeah, I need to add a variable here. This is going to be bar. It's going to be bar validate and it's going to be a reference to validate door dot validate okay and here we need to associate this custom tag this is cool tag with a custom validator so this is going to be validate that register validation and this one and the first parameter is the tag that is is cool, the one that we added here, this one. And the second one is going to be our validator. So I'm going to put nil now and I'm going to replace it after I create the custom validator. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it validators. And here I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it validators that go. Okay, the package is going to be validators. And I'm going to create a function that is going to be validate full title. And this is going to return a field that's going to be validator that field level like that and it's going to return true or false so it's going to be a boolean ok 
okay. And it's going to return. And here what we're going to do is, if the field contains the word cool, we're going to return true. And in any other case, we are going to return false. So this is going to be the strings, and we're going, to, we're going to use the contains function, sorry, the strings, yeah, that. And we're going to use the contains function, and we're going to pass the field, field that field, field. This is going to give us the contents of, or the value of the field. And this is going to be a string, and we're going to pass the word that we want to be included to return that the title is cool. Let's go back to the controller. And now we can associate the tag with the custom validator that we just created. So it's going to be validators that validate cool title. So we associate the tag with the function that we just created. That is actually this one. Okay. And now what we have to do is after the binding and after handling the error, we need to add the validation. So it's going to be R equals to validate that struct. And we pass the video. And here again, we need to handle the error and we're going to return the error in case we get any errors on the validation. So let's run the server again. And let's try this. Okay, let's go to Postman. And we have the input that is valid. Okay, here we get an error. Field validation for title failed on the is cool tag. Yeah, because we are not sending a cool title. We are not including the word cool here. So if we add cool title, and now if we send the request, the input is valid. If we remove that, we're going to get an error again. So. Okay, now we have our custom validation running. So we added the binding with some fields required, specifying the range of values that we expect for an int, for example, in this case for the age of the person. We also specified the minimum and maximum for the title. We specified a maximum number of characters for the description of the video. Uh, we specified that we want the URL to be a valid URL, the same for the email. And we also specify it that when we bind the video, the author is a required field. And the last one is this custom validator that checks that the title includes the word cool. Okay, that's pretty much all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.